biology. So now apart from that, now let's look at now the parts of the skin. So uh, which are the parts of the skin? So for the parts of the skin, we see that the skin is mainly made up of the three parts that we, are just, uh, we had just mentioned before, whereby we say that it is epidermis, we have the dermis, the middle part, and then finally the subcutaneous fat layer. So these are the three main parts of the skin. So let's begin with the first one. The first one is now the epidermis. So epidermis is the first and the outermost layer, the first and the outermost layer of the skin. So for the epidermis, we see that it's the outermost layer of the skin and it's made up of also three main layers. So epidermis has three main layers. So the first layer of the epidermis is the conified layer. After the conified layer, the second layer of the epidermis is the granular layer. And then finally, we have the malphigian layer. So those are the three main parts of the skin. So the conified layer, the granular layer, and finally, the malpigian layer of the skin. So let's begin with the first one. So the first one is the conified layer of the skin. Then the conified layer continues to exist. So apart from that, we see that the conified layer is mainly thick in places whereby there is much friction. So in places whereby there is much friction, maybe for example, the palms of the hand. So here in the palms of the hand, whereby there is much friction due to gripping all the time, due to catching this, catching that. So the conified layer is very thick. And also the soles of the, the soles of the feet, also the soles of the feet, uh, the skin is very thick. The conified layer is very thick. So the areas of much friction, the conified layer will be very thick. While areas of less friction, the areas, uh, the conified layer is very thin. So the areas of less friction, for example, we have the lips, we have also the eyeballs. So the lips and the eyeballs, whereby there is less friction. So the conified layer is very thin, but the areas whereby there is much friction, like the palms of the hand, the soles of the feet, that uh, those areas have a very thick layer of the conified layer. So apart from that, let's look at the next layer of the epidermis, which is now referred to as the granular layer. So we see that the granular layer is basically found between the conified layer and the malphigian layer. So this is mainly the middle layer of the epidermis and mainly consists of living cells having granules. So here, in the granular layer, there are living cells having granules, therefore granular layer. So the cells here have granules and therefore that's why they are called the granular layer. So when these cells die, they give rise now to the conified layer, as we had said. So if they die, they move up to form the conified layer. So apart from that, let's now look at the last layer of the skin, which is now referred to as the malphigian layer of the skin. So for the malphigian layer, we see that in this malphigian layer, it is in close proximity with the dermis. So we have the dermis here, then the malphigian layer here. So this is the innermost layer of the epidermis. It is made up of actively dividing cells, which give rise now to the, to the epidermis. So here, picture this. So the cells of the epidermis begin from the malphigian layer. Malphigian layer, we have now the young cells. We have very developing cells. After the malphigian layer, cells have become, let's say, old or have matured, they move to the granular layer. After the granular layer have died, they move to the conified layer. So that is the malphigian layer. So it gives rise to new cells. So here we have developing cells of the epidermis. So we see that also this layer contains melanin pigments which give the skin uh, which gives skin its color that is the malphigian layer it also contains the melanin enzyme or melanin pigment which gives rise to the skin color so for the dark skinned people we see that dark skinned people have a very large amount of melanin so for the dark skinned people the melanin quantity in the skin is very high that's why they are dark skinned people so for the light skinned people they have very low quantity of melanin in the skin that's why they have mm, yeah that's why uh, they are light skinned so for dark skinned people we say that they have a very large quantity of melanin in the skin and that's why uh, they are dark skinned for the light skinned people they have very low amount of melanin pigments in their skin and that's why they are light skinned people 
So for the melanin, you see that the function of melanin, first of all, is to give skin its color. Uh, if a person is dark-skinned or light-skinned, and then apart from that, also the other function of melanin is that it also protects us from harmful UV sun rays. Because these harmful UV sun rays can easily lead someone to getting skin cancer. So melanin also prevents an individual from harmful UV sun rays which can lead to skin cancer or also skin irritations. So apart from that now, let's now look at the dermis. So the next uh, part of the skin is now the dermis. So remember, the first part of the skin is the epidermis, which comprises of three main regions. So you have the conified layer, we have the granular layer, and the innermost malphigian layer. So those are the three layers of the epidermis. So apart from that, now we have now the dermis as the second part of the skin. So the first one is epidermis, the second part is now the dermis. So for the dermis, you see that it lies immediately below the malphigian layer of the epidermis. So you have the malphigian layer, then after that the dermis begins. So it lies below the malphigian layer of the epidermis. So the dermis, we see that it is much thicker than the epidermis. So it is much thicker because it contains very many other tissues, very many other structures which facilitate for the smooth functioning of the skin. So it is much thicker than the epidermis and contains different structures. Like for example, it has the sweat glands which produces sweat. It also has hair follicles. Uh, which has root hairs giving rise to the different hairs. It has blood capillaries, which also moistens and nutrifies the skin. After that, it has nerve endings for irritability process. It has the lymphatic vessels to supply the different lymphocytes in the skin to fight this and that infection. It has the sensory organs also for irritability. It has the different uh, sebaceous gland to moisten the skin, etc., etc. Biology.